Hey guys, this is part two to borderline toxicity and the need to abuse the romantic partner unconsciously. Kind of up against the ropes here. But I have a family member coming to pick me up to go shopping, so I'm going to try to squeeze this part two out. But uh, basically, guys, um, as a result of child abuse and, and things and, and abandonment, abandonment issues, never being addressed, things like that, it can lead the adult individual to become toxic. And so what I was just saying before I got cut off the last video, my ex-girlfriend literally the other day walks by my workplace with another guy and kind of has a little smirk on her face and doesn't even come over and say hi. This is an example of unconscious desire to abuse a romantic partner. And she, she may not even be aware of it. Um, she's admitted to me she has major abandonment issues from her father who is a complete scumbag. Um, she, as an adult, had gone to, to ask him for something. He completely turned her away. This was even a recent, within the last few years, event. Um, so complete abandonment by the father. So this is this has probably led to uh, unconscious hatred towards all men that she dates as a result of those un, unmet needs with the father figure, um, feeling abandoned by the father figure. Uh, for example, I kind of look like her dad, so I got no chance at all, right? Because I'm, I'm the hatred. I'm the... I'm the unconscious hatred, you know, now I hate daddy, he's a fucking prick, right? So now if, you know, I'm dating a guy and he looks like daddy, he must be like daddy, so I gotta, you know, put him in the friend zone or fucking avoid him. It's all related to trauma. Trauma triggers, you know, I can't be around that guy because he looks like my dad and I hate my fucking dad. Or if she is around me, if I do look like her dad and she's not realizing it, maybe start abusing me without even realizing it verbally. Um, the devaluement cycles with a sociopathic borderline can be brutal. I mean, they come pick you up. Let's say they come pick you up to go disc golfing or something. You get in the car and they're already talking about dropping you off after they get out. That's an example of devaluement of a borderline, sociopathic borderline. They want to put you in the place of, they want to make a sociopathic borderline secretly wants to abuse you unconsciously. Because it's, 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 they're not even aware of it. But it's, it's that resentment from childhood. It's that hatred towards human beings. It's that hatred towards father figure. It's that hatred towards the guy in front of me who looks like daddy. Or who acts like daddy. Or, you know, they just basically want to just make their romantic partner, like, I guess feel abused. And they seem to slightly get a, they seem to slightly enjoy it. Like, for example, the girl that I love that left me recently after three weeks of coming to visit me and then within three weeks was already in devaluement and moved out. Um, it's just insane, guys. It's just completely insane. Um, so anyway, because of that toxicity from child abuse that's built up, the adult individual tends to kind of look at the object other with a hatred or a disdain or a mistrust. A uh, very untrusting attitude. The the girl I'm talking about recently told me that relationships trigger her. Why is that? She don't want to be commingled with another human being because she secretly probably even hates men. She might not admit it, but because of her father's abandonment, she may have a secret hatred towards men and actually maybe even sexually get off from abusing me verbally or or. Uh, emotionally like her walking by my workplace the other day and smiling at me as she's with another man that she knows upsets me when i see her with other guys i've already told her that that upsets me i'm not going to do anything but i feel bad about it right who wants to see their girlfriend with another guy right doesn't mean we have to flip out but we can be upset in inwardly as long as we're appropriate but so basically it's that walking by is part of her abuse She's, she knows that I, that I want to be with her. She knows I miss her. She knows I want her to come visit me. And so her just, her walking by me like that is like putting candy in a child's face and saying, you want this candy, little baby? You can't have it. And that's the abuse. She's actually psychologically abusing me. I've had to block this person, I actually block them yesterday because I just, I can't take the insanity anymore. Um, this person goes through love-hate cycles very quickly where... You know, this last, this most recent one was three weeks. Literally, dude, within the three weeks, I'm going out to coffee with her and her sister. Everything's wonderful. Um, we went out to a to a bar, a local bar. She's holding my hand at the bar, telling me how wonderful I am and that I'm the only guy that can put up with her and understand her. 
you know, I'm the greatest thing since sliced bread. And then within three weeks, she's de she's entered the devaluement period. Her sister actually said she should move out and go to the shelter, which she ended up doing. Thanks, sis, um, for ruining our relationship. Do you see how this is all, like, you know, the sister comes from the same family of abuse? So it's that devaluement of men based on what daddy did. Daddy abandoned us. Daddy was a fucking scumbag. So you know what we're, we're going to do? We're going to emotionally abuse men around us to get back. Instead of, you know, doing what they should do, which is get therapy, go to counseling, talk it out. You know what I do as a man sometimes, literally, when I feel fucking rageful? I'll literally find a private spot and I'll beat the fuck out of a chair with a baseball bat or something like that to get that fucking rage out. Because you need to get those feelings out in a safe way. That doesn't mean fucking shit up in front of people because that could be perceived as domestic violence behavior but if you had like a secret room or a secret shed where you could do some fucking baseball bat therapy man i stand behind that because it really works you know i've been at work before and been really fucking pissed off and i'll go punch boxes in a private room that gets that anger and that rage out so that i don't take it out on someone that doesn't deserve it um, so you really, so that's an example of me saying, okay, I'm, 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 I'm really angry. How do I get this anger out safely? So I go punch a box at work or something, you know, privately, not around people, but it's getting those emotions out. You know, if I feel really sad or suicidal, maybe go to counseling and talk about it. Why not go to counseling and talk about the abandonment? And do you have any unresolved issues from that? Why not go to counseling and talk about the sexual abuse that y'all never talk about? Why don't you go to counseling and talk about the physical abuse that you never talk about? I recently had to confront a family member on my own personal child abuse because I was angry that they hadn't done more to stop it. So do you see how I'm kind of addressing those feelings rather than just pushing them inside? Actually, you know, confronting people in a safe way can be therapeutic, you know, especially like your abuser, you know, like there's nothing wrong with telling your abuser you know, I know what you did and you should apologize for it. There's nothing wrong with saying that. Um, everybody's human. Everybody makes mistakes. But there's really no excuse for domestic violence. And there's no excuse for abuse. Nobody deserves to be abused. Nobody deserves to be mentally tortured or mentally berated. Um, you know, even with her, like that, that, when she walked by me at my workstation, part of that is her, her desire to psychologically abuse me because what of her what her father did to her and then the second part of that is a fear of either rejection or a fear of abandonment on her part so she thinks i can't approach him because what if he tells me to go fuck myself or what if he says he doesn't want to see me so there's that low self-esteem fear of rejection working and the need to psychologically abuse me with like the candy in front of a kid hey you want some candy kid no nope, can't have it that's exactly what she said. Hey, I know you want me, the girl that you've always loved, but you can't have me. And in fact, I'm with another guy, which you told me upsets you. And I'm going to smile as I walk away and not even close enough to say hi. And no regard for my feelings. You know, couldn't come over and say hi to me. I let this bitch stay with me for three weeks in the wintertime so she wasn't freezing in the car. The least she could do is come fuck and say hi to me. But the sociopathic ones don't give a fuck, you guys. And that's why it's so, so hard to be the boyfriend of a sociopathic borderline. They can be physically abusive. I've literally had another girlfriend have me up by the throat out front of the house. A board, another borderline. She was also suffering with a little schizophrenia as well. She had me up by the throat. I said, honey, do you not realize that if the police drive by and see you doing this, they're going to stop? Um... Same girl smacked me in the face um, once. It's just insane. They can be physically abusive. Um, men, we don't deserve it. You know, in that case, that was definitely a case of toxicity. Um, the same individual, the, another individual that I was dating admitted to me that she was severely abused as a child. And so this leads to a hatred towards men inwardly, unconsciously, if not dealt with through counseling and other means. Rage therapy, like I say, with my bat, with my baseball bat. Um, there's ways to get that anger out safely, guys, and let's get all, let's all work together to process any toxicity in us. Let it work through. Let it flow like water. Go to counseling. Get therapy. Sit down with a counselor and say, 
geez, I've been suicidal lately. Is there anything I can do that would help me change my mindset? And I, I tell people, why don't you watch some positive shows? You know, like if I put you on a Joe Osteen diet for a week, I guarantee you'd, you wouldn't be suicidal anymore. If you can get your mind in a positive direction, that's what you want to do. But anyway, guys, in conclusion, this video is not meant to bash on borderline individuals. I'm directly talking about the individuals that have antisocial personality disorder and borderline personality, the same disorder, which makes them sociopathic. Um, you can look all that stuff up. You can look borderline up on Google. You can look sociopathy up on Google. It basically means a sociopathic borderline has no regard for us boyfriend's feelings or a girlfriend's feelings. Um, it's heartbreaking to try to love these individuals, guys, because they want to dip in and out and stuff. It's just insane, guys. Um, you may have to block the person for your own personal mental health. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Subscribe to this video if you'd like. Uh, check out some of my new Amazon products. I've been doing Amazon. I design Amazon products for Amazon. So I'm going to leave a link for one of those in the description. I got a nice wolf shirt for, I believe it's